Good morning, everybody. It is a marvelous Monday. Fantastic services yesterday. I tell you what, it was just a great day all the way around. Resurrection Sunday. Oh, where would we be? Where would we be without the resurrection of our Lord and Savior? We have a hope. We have a, a, a blessing, a time that we know this is but a passing through stage. We have a whole eternity to look forward to praising our God and thanking our Savior for his wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sacrifice. It's just a great day. It's a marvelous Monday. It's kind of in between here. We have a little sun, a little cloud, and just see what God's going to do. But we're going to be looking at facing our fears. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. beautiful day marvelous Monday it's always a great day great day God's doing great and mighty things at us and through us here at Lighthouse just I so look forward to being in the services because who knows what God's gonna do God's in control doing great things and you know he was here he was here yesterday morning resurrection Sunday and today's the day after the greatest event in all humankind the greatest event that ever took place in history resurrection of our lord and our savior so it's a great day and so today i i just feel god impressed on me that we look at facing our fear fear can show up in our lives in many ways and cause us to be hesitant insecure full of doubts it can take the form of worry and anxiety affecting our physical bodies in extreme ways. Fear from things like past abuse or painful circumstances can often linger for years, affecting our relationships and popping up when we least expect it. So where does fear come from? It's important to know that fear does not originate from God. The Bible says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us spirit of power and of love, of calm, well-balanced mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 in the Amplified. Fear is a weapon of our enemy, Satan who uses it to keep us from moving forward and enjoying the future God has for us, especially when something negative happens. The enemy wants us to focus on all the what-ifs and fill our lives with uncertainty. He desires to pull our focus away from God's love and his faithfulness. You see, Satan wants us to shrink back in fear and live tiny, useless lives however god desires for us to live free from the effects of fear and live big fulfilling lives he wants us to enjoy freedom and creativity unhampered by fear i think we would be amazed if we took time to notice how often our circumstances and reactions to people are rooted in fear we would also learn a great deal about ourselves 
People sometimes spend their entire lives reacting to situations in ways that prevent them from being the people they truly want to be. Never realize that their lives feel empty because they have allowed fear to dictate their decisions. Maybe you have a dream to write a book, but the fear of someone rejecting your work has kept you from trying it. It could even be something as simple like changing your hair color, but you're afraid you won't like it, so you just settle for keeping it the way it is. Fear doesn't show up just for the big events. It's always lurking, hoping for a chance to influence your life, even if it only causes a vague feeling of dread or doubt. For example, maybe you're in a room enjoying a conversation with a few friends, and when suddenly another person joins a group and you feel intimidated, when this happens, the culprit, the culprit is fear. Many times a fearful reaction can be related to a specific personality type to remind you of someone who hurt you earlier in your life. Or perhaps you view the person who intimidates you as better looking or more educated than you are. It, may, it makes you feel insecure. The truth is, you can feel intimidated for a number of reasons, none of which are related to the other person at all. When we don't understand how fear works, we can even begin blaming others for our uneasiness, although they haven't done anything wrong. Whenever you feel intimidated or insecure, the best thing you do is ask God, what's going on? Then watch and wait for him to speak to your heart and show you. The answer may take time, but God's word promises that if you search for truth, you'll find it, and the truth will make you free. John 8, 31, 32, then Jesus turned to the Jews who had claimed to believe in him. If you stick with this, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure. Then you will experience for yourselves the truth, and the truth will free you. Fear can show up unexpectedly. That's why one of our goals should be to recognize it so we can deal with it right away. I think too often we, come, we become accustomed to something and we just put up with it when we should be confronting it and moving past it. God reminds us that we should resist Satan in the source of all fear. According to God's word, the sleep of the righteous should be sweet. Proverbs 3.24, you'll take afternoon naps without worry. You'll enjoy a good night's sleep. Fear can steal anything from us if we let it. Whether we walk in faith or fear is a decision we must make many times throughout our lives. I don't think it would be a stretch to say we may need to make that a daily choice. Dr. David Livingstone served as a medical missionary to Africa for 30 years. He suffered hunger, sickness, injuries. Shall I tell you what sustained me amidst the toils, hardships, and loneliness of my yielded life? Asked Dr. Livingstone, he continued. It was a promise. Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth, from Matthew 28. 18 through 20, we read, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you even to the end of this age. Amen. In addition, we read in Hebrews 13, 5, and 6, Let your... Con let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can men do to me? Dr. Lloyd John Ogilvy, former chaplain of the United States Senate, shares the following and if God cares, why do I still have problems? God gives us a specific promise in the Bible for every problem. We have a Lord who not only helps us grow through our problems, 
but gives us the power to triumph over them. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 1.20, For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. In Jude one twenty four, we read, Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Corey Ten Boom makes the following observation in the hiding place. There is no pit so deep that he is not deeper still. An unknown poet expresses the following poetic verse. If the path I walk seems steep and rugged, and I must labor long to reach the goal, there's always one close by my side to help me. He brings sweet rest and comfort to my soul. And from the pages of God's book before me, he speaks the words that all my fears dispel and though I do not know why nor wherefore, I can be sure that he does all things well. I believe many times we wait for the feelings of fear to go away before stepping out to take action. However, when the Lord tells us in his word to fear not, he's not saying that we will never feel fear. We will all feel afraid at various times in our lives. He is telling us not to allow fear to control us and to prevent us from moving forward. That's what courage is. True courage is moving forward in the face of fear. You can still fear, but you are determined with God's help to confront it and move forward anyway. Galatians 5.1 says that if for freedom... That Christ has set you free. Stand firm, then do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Satan is very shrewd. He doesn't give up very easily. I guess we can say that he never completely gives up the hope of drawing us back into that bondage that we were in. That is why we must live watchfully, ready to recognize and immediately confront the things that steal our freedom for Christ. Don't let fear push you around another day. Open your heart to God. He will show you the truth and shed his light into the areas of your life you don't understand. If you recognize fear and learn how to operate, you can gain freedom from it. Psalm 34, 4 says, I sought, inquired of the Lord and required him, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears, I encourage you, spend time with God and study what his word says about this subject. Ask him to uncover the areas of your life that are being impacted by fear in some way. As you do, he will, he will not only strengthen your faith, but he will give you the courage to face your fears, to walk step by step, into a life of freedom in Jesus Christ. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. We can have freedom from all our fears, past failures. We can walk upright, looking up, looking up, looking up. God is with us always. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He sticks closer than a brother. There's no better than living for our God and face our fears and let God have control. He can do above and beyond what we ever ask or think if we'll give him control. Bring it to the altar and leave it there and don't pick it up and take it back with you. God doesn't need our help. He can take care of it if we'll allow him to do what needs to be done in our hearts and our lives. Father, I thank you and praise you. God, I thank you for this glorious day. I thank you for this time. I thank you for this season. Father, the resurrection of our Savior, such a glorious, glorious thing. And we thank you, Father, that we have that hope. Father, we ask you now, help us to overcome our fears. Fears of the future, fears of things that we didn't get done in the past. But, Father, they're all in your hand. 
you hold us all. And Father, we just ask you now to speak into our hearts. Give us understanding. Give us wisdom. Satan is out as a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. But we know, God, you have pulled his teeth. We ask you now to help us to walk in faith. And I give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, it's a great day. Get out and invite somebody to church. We have service Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, pre-service prayer, 630. Hey, it's just a great, 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 great day to believe, believe in Jesus and be living for God. Facing our fears, let them go. God can take and do it with it much more than we ever ask or think. Hey, the lights are still on at the lighthouse. We're going to make it with Jesus. Be blessed because you're a blessing. Have a great day and a great week. Thank you.